Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where last episode we finished up our repair work here at the station. We also installed the quest to join to airlock over here and that is absolutely great. We're done here and we can bring this particular shuttle flight to a close. So let's just go ahead and go to retrograde which we're actually already at and we can just bring this right on down. Phenomenal. So we've got plenty of Delta V to make this happen, of course. There's going to be absolutely no problem whatsoever with that. Goodbye, station. We will be back. I haven't looked yet at what the, uh, what the next component is going to be. Maybe I should. But for right now, we're just going to bring our periapsis height down to about 80. And that is our current goal here. So we're at 140 right now. And it definitely needs to continue to drop. 100. And that's 80 approximately it doesn't have to be perfect so now we'll just circularize here i do want to come down on the day side and given where these markers are right now we're probably going to need to choose our time to enter a little bit more carefully so we'll do something along the lines of this and just circularize it up so let's align to the node and we're going to warp on over as soon as we get aligned there we go, that's gonna be about 20 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna take a quick look here at what our next component is going to end up being. So let's see, we just did the quest joint airlock. So next is going to be the piers docking component, which was actually lifted by Soyuz. It's not a shuttle flight. Remarkable. Now the piers docking component has since been deorbited. So that is certainly something to note. Okay, well, We'll figure it out. <laughs> For now, I, I think, yeah, we'll need to be able to deorbit it. It doesn't, like, naturally decay in Kerbal, unlike in reality, right? So that'll be an interesting way to figure that out, and we'll just figure out where it goes. That'll be definitely interesting because I've been building this based off of the current configuration, which, of course, would not contain the Piers docking module because that was deorbited a while ago. The question is, when was it deorbited? I don't actually know that, and uh, let me let me just see here. Do do do, undocking and disposal, 2021. Okay, good to know. So that is very recent indeed, considerably more recent than where where we are right now. Right now we're in like 2001, so there is that. And we've overshot this a little bit. This is fine. I'm not concerned about it. So we're going to go to kill rot here. We're no longer interested in the maneuver node. Well, let's just go over to... Well, retrograde is fine. Sometime around here-ish? No, it'll be like here-ish that we want to drop our periapsis down. Yeah, we'll just put that at 40 as we normally do, or approximately 40. It looks like it's probably by the time we get around there going to be a land landing. That's okay. We do prefer land landings, ideally. The shuttle is designed for land landings, although... Sea landings are definitely easier, so there is that. We're just going to position at the node here, or approximately at the node, and let's just warp right on around, and we'll bring this shuttle down. It'll definitely be... kind of nice to be launching a Soyuz, although the I, I've, it's been so long that I'm going to have to re-figure out exactly like what inclination we're aiming for and such. That's okay. We can, we can figure that out on the fly. The Soyuz has so much spare fuel that I'm really, really not concerned about that. So we're just going to bring this right on down. 30 seconds, 20, 10, and mark. Magnificent. Okay, this'll do. Next step, of course, is that we are going to vent out all of our fuel. And of course, that vents from both sides simultaneously so that it doesn't affect our altitude at all. And now we're going to hop over to horizontal velocity up. There we go. We can turn off our lights, I suppose. Because we are going to be coming in on daytime. And around we go. We'll have to reorient, of course. And in atmosphere as of now. Phenomenal. So we'll just orient on over. Ooh, on physics warp, this is very sensitive. Okay, <laughs> very, very sensitive. There we go. But we're going to physics warp this down as much as we can. 
What is our trajectory looking like? This could actually be a water landing. Actually, I think it's pretty likely that this ends up being a water landing. We'll find out. Water landings are less spicy, so I guess that's not the worst thing. We're not really trying for any specific type of landing. We're just bringing this thing down for time purposes, right? Like, we're already coming up close to 100 episodes in this series. I'm not too concerned about getting things absolutely precise for these landings. It really doesn't matter. So we're going to bring this down. We've currently eaten up about 25% of our periapsis margin, which is fine. We definitely have a bit of a height issue here. We're a little too high, but we're going way too fast to really maneuver at this time. So we just need to slow it on down. As we can see, our velocity is currently increasing. So we need to get lower at this juncture. We've now eaten up half of our periapsis height. We are bleeding off quite a lot of potential energy. We are, or we were still speeding up towards the periapsis. Now we're slowing down towards the periapsis and we can see time to periapsis is going up. So of course we're not going to be hitting the periapsis. The real question is land or water landing. And it sure looks like water to me. Okay. That'll be absolutely fine. I don't mind either way. We can, we can do it either direction, but water will be okay. So down we go. And of course, we brought Bill instead of Bob. We left Bob up at the station. We might want to send up our Soyuz with one empty seat. So we would send a pilot and an engine and wow, I can't speak. And an engineer. And we would probably bring back Bob at that point. Because we don't need to have people up there necessarily. I mean, in reality, it's supposed to be continuously inhabited, inhabited though. So maybe we should. I don't know. We haven't really been doing the crew resupply. We've just been doing assembly of the ISS thus far. So there is that. So as we can see, it's definitely going to be a water landing, right? There's no doubt about that in my mind right now. We can drop our physics warp for the moment. We are almost to the point where we can maneuver a bit. Yeah, this is a thousand percent a water landing. And I want to dive right on down here. I want to be on kill rot. Thank you very much. And I want to dive. Ooh, this is. That is quite a thing. Can we, you know, not? <laughs> I would rather not be spinning. Okay, let's get that under control. There we go. So I want to just be at surface velocity up for right now. So we're just diving straight on down, right? And then we're going to pull out of this dive soon enough. I'm going to put us on kill rot right now. I just want to lose as much altitude as we can right now. We're losing a lot of velocity to drag, and that is exactly what we want. But we need to make our way on down here. We're currently about six and a half kilometers up. I'm just going to go to horizontal velocity up as soon as we reach somewhere around two kilometers in terms of altitude. So we're just going to bring this down a little further. We're at about four kilometers right now. 3.5. Three. 2.5. Three. And two kilometers. Pulling up. Cool. Now the question is, do we need to lose more altitude? I think we actually do need to lose a little bit more altitude. So I'm going to put us back at surface velocity plus, and then we're going to go to horizontal velocity plus at somewhere around 500 meters here. So we're diving down again. 700, 600, and 500. Pulling up. These are some pretty high G-force maneuvers. And at this point, we're going to need to bleed off as much speed as we can, right? So I'm going to go into kill rot, and we're going to nose up a little bit here. Bringing our nose up, and we're going to get our shoots out. I'm just keeping an eye on our altitude here. Okay, shoots out. And we're nosing up. Just looking to glide in as best as we can. There we go. Fantastic. Not a bad landing at all. Like I said, water is a lot less spicy. 
<laughs> but uh, honestly, it's the same procedure on land. We just lower our landing gear, right? It's not fundamentally different. So we'll recover that vessel, and now we need to set up our temporary module here, which is going to eventually be removed. We'll have to figure out where exactly that ends up going, and that needs to be a Soyuz. Okay, so we've got this convenient photo here for how this is going to end up going. So we've got the Russian orbital segment here, right? So this is a Soyuz slash pro progress here. This is a Zvezda module. This is the Zarya module. And then the Piers docking module ends up going right here. So it's very similar to some of our like PMA style modules. Very similar indeed. It's intended to have a Soyuz docking to it. And there's this like, okay. We need to hop over to the ISS here quick. First, we're going to grab ourselves our payment, right? So we need to hop over, grab our payment. There we go. Now, we're going to hop over to the tracking station. And we need to jump out to the ISS and take a look at our Russian orbital segment. That is obviously going to be where this is going to be connected. And we need to figure out exactly where we want to put it in. So this is that center module here between the uh, Zvezda and Zarya modules. So if we head on back over here... We can see this is a Zvezda, the further one, and the Zarya module. And then this is that center module right here. So basically this goes on... Let's see. What port is this? This goes on to the Nadir port. Okay, so the downward facing port. The zenith facing port... If we go over here, the zenith facing port is up on this chart and down is nadir so it would end up going we've got the uh this is a zarya module here this is a zvezda module and then it would go functionally where like the the nauka multi-purpose laboratory module goes ultimately it will replace it in that position right but it goes on the nadir port here so it ends up going on this port right here now that is a large port so we need to head back to the space center here and hop into the VAB. We need to load up a Soyuz. This specifically launches on Soyuz. So I think we're just going to have it like docked to the top of the Soyuz. Or should it be contained in like a service module or something? I'm not sure. Let's hop into the VAB here and... I want to take a look here at how it was launched. Okay, the Poisk module was no longer included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Poisk module would have been the MRM2 module, right? So that's fine. For now, we're just needing to do the Piers module. So how is that stacked into the Soyuz, I'm wondering? It really looks to me, based on this image, like it's just attached to the Soyuz and then just docked up. So that's simple enough, in theory. So if that's the case, we can then open up a Soyuz. It doesn't really matter which one we go for, but we need some form of Soyuz. And then we've got this guy here, right? So we've got this fairing. We might have to redo this fairing. So we've got this docking port here. Okay, so this is currently a small docking port that's mounted in there. Let's get that off of here for now. Let's remove this docking port. We'll put a docking port junior like so. If I can get it to attach there. We're probably going to need to delete this fairing. Okay, so we delete the fairing. There we go. And this would go on like so, but I'm going to ditch this docking port. This is not necessary. The launch escape system can go there in theory, but it's actually going to go like up here for this particular Soyuz anyway. And I'm going to call this the Piers Docking Module. Did that have an S? Hang on. Double checking. Yes, it does have an S. Perfect. So that'll be fine. As far as the actual design of the module goes, it's functionally, there's not a lot to it, right? We've got a docking port that is docked in like this. 
It's very similar to the PMAs that we put up previously. So then that is going to connect in to a larger docking port. So that's going to be one of these bad boys that that's going to connect to the station, right? So that's all well and good. We can certainly do that. Then we would need to have some sort of a like mid piece, right? So this is kind of like a like internal airlock, I think almost. It'll be something very similar to that. So it would be something along the lines of this, right? So this would be the small docking port. The large docking port would go up here and then it's very cylindrical and it has like this, this like visual bay, vi vision port window. <laughs> maybe that's the word we should go for. Okay, so maybe we, in order to simulate that, go with something like a crew cabin or a hitchhiker storage container, which feels wildly huge for what we're going for. Even a crew cabin feels a little tall for what we're going for, although getting a little bit of distance here isn't necessarily the worst thing. That is a theoretical option. Obviously, the Mark III passenger module is way too big. The other choice that we could go for is we could think about going for a more cargo-oriented module here, or perhaps even something like a Science Junior and just pretend like these are windows. <laughs> We could do that route, for sure. In terms of size, it should be at least this big, right? At least 1.25 meter. So we're going to have to determine what we want that to end up being. We could certainly have it be a service module of some sort. This service module here is interesting. It'll have the same problem as before. We don't want to uh, we, we don't want to actually eject any of these parts, right? So we could do something like that. And then we could just put a service bay 1.25 meter here. And then the clampatron docking port like that. And then the launch escape system would go on there. That is a theoretical option. Inside of the service bay, what would we want to have? I don't know, this is really more of an airlock. And I mean, in reality, we've got like this inflatable airlock, right? That we just put up on the quest joint module, but that's not really what we would be looking for here. So I think it would be something kind of like this. I would prefer that this have a window on it. Maybe we could just put like a cupola module in here. I think this is too big though. Oh yeah, that's way too big. So that's not going to end up being what we go for. This really does need to be 1.25 meter. So we could ditch this service module. We could go for an adapter and that would end up adapting from like a relatively small size up to a somewhat bigger size, right? So it would adapt from like this size up to 1.25. So that's FL size. Yeah, that's definitely not what we're looking for. But as a hypothetical, we could grab say this hammer. Yeah, that's the correct size. Okay, so in that case, what do we want to have here? I'm actually leaning towards it being a crew cabin. The crew cabin will be a little bit on the large size for this. And I don't know about closing this fairing. How are we gonna go about closing the fairing? One thing we definitely need to have is some strut work here. So we're definitely going to need to have strut connectors right here. And these are going to be repurposed. These will be moved after we dock to be over here, docking up to the Russian segment of the station. So that'll be the idea. Next, we'll try to build this fairing. I'm not 100% convinced that this is going to function the way I want it to. But the fairing is just going to head up like so. And then the fairing really wants to close off right about here, right? But that clips in, and so that's not really a viable option. How did we get it closed here before? Well, I think what we did was we removed the launch escape system, and then we built the fairing out like so, approximately. And then we put the launch escape system back in and just had it clip out like that. I think that's how we did it previously, and that's how we'll do it again here. So this is going to be a little heavier than your standard Soyuz, no doubt about that, but this allows us to take the Soyuz down to the docking port junior size, which I think is really solid. We can double check our staging here. It's been a while since we've launched a Soyuz. 
That's the fairing there. The fairing is really going to be manually deployed. And then, let's see, this is all part of this Rockamax fuel tank here, right. Yeah. So that's all fine. We're going to have so much extra fuel for this. We can put this out on the pad. This is, of course, going to go to the Woomerang launch site. And we'll launch this. We'll see how we end up doing on the inclination. It's been a while since we've launched a Soyuz. So we kind of get some free inclination out of the Woomerang launch site, which is nice. And the Soyuz has just a crazy amount of fuel as well. So this should be no problem. Even if we don't nail the inclination, we can do an inclination change and get there without any real problem. Oh, uh, we wanted to have an empty, empty passenger slot here, right? This is probably going to be full. Let's double check that. I think we're going to have three Kerbals in this. I want to only have two. Yeah, so we're going to have to have Valentina out of here. I'm going to hop back to the VAB. I'm not going to make you sit through the loading again, but uh, I'm going to get Valentina out of here, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so here we are all loaded up with Valentina no longer in here. The question now is, how are we doing on the actual curvature? Actually, this is pretty close to being where we want to be. So we're going to set the ISS as our target here, and I want to just let this rotate just a smidge more. The ISS is traveling this direction, so we're going to need to go southward, right? So we need to go down this way, I believe. This is away from the ISS right here. Our timing is not going to be perfect for going to the ISS, right? But 67 was our normal angling. And so we need to go this direction, I'm pretty sure. So let's just lift this off, throttle up. We're going to go to surface up right now. And off we go. Phenomenal. We've got good thrust to weight on this, of course. We are not shocked about that in the slightest. And we're just going to be flying for a while here. We're going to have to ditch our side boosters. This is always the kind of spicy thing, right? But I want to rotate us into being about here or so for our inclination. There we go. Because we want to go up this direction, approximately. It's not going to be exact, but that is approximately the direction we want to go. So we're currently at an apoapsis of about 10 kilometers. We definitely need to get more apoapsis out of this. We're going to go to about... I mean, we've had good luck with the shuttle going to about 40 in terms of straight up. We'll see how it goes with the Soyuz. I know I've done 20 previously. I think I'm just going to go straight up to about the same 40. Cool. So this is 30 right now, and 35, 37, 38, 39, and 40. Okay, so now we're going to head out this direction, but I'm going to park us about here for the moment, because we're about to run out of fuel on these boosters here. A lot of wiggling going on here. Okay, that was mildly dangerous, but it's okay. I'm going to turn down our gimbal here to like 10%, and now we're going to make our way over to the horizon. We've got lots of apoapsis height, so we need horizontal speed. Really, we can just go to horizontal velocity up, right? And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to park there for now. I want to check our current descending node. Minus 153. Are we going the wrong way? We might actually be going the wrong direction here. Okay. If that's the case, we're going to have to bring this around. We don't have a lot of horizontal speed right now. I'm going to up this gimbal to like 20%, 25 maybe. Okay. We may actually need to flip this all the way around. I'm going to park here for now and see how we're feeling. Well, that's helping anyway. So we want to go to normal plus here, I think. Yeah, we're going the wrong direction. So I definitely did not nail that. Luckily, this thing has so much extra fuel that it really, really, really doesn't matter. So that's okay. We're just going to bring this guy right on around. No problem whatsoever here. You can see this is moving, and that is exactly what we want. 
So we're just changing our inclination here. We've got like 90 degrees to go. It's gonna be a lot, no doubt about that. This is not the most fuel efficient way to do this, but luckily we have roughly a trillion fuel. Emphasis on roughly. So we're just bringing this right on around. We might need to get additional altitude here, we'll see. We're going to be running out of fuel in this stage fairly soon, but we are going to want to go to horizontal velocity up soon. We're currently about 20 degrees off on our inclination. Okay. And I also want to deploy our fairing here. And let's go around here for now. 11.4 degrees off. Okay, I actually still do want to be in normal up. We're not going to be in horizontal velocity up just yet. We've got about 9 degrees to go here. We need a lot of horizontal speed, and in reality, we're going to need some vertical speed most likely as well. The inclination was definitely the wrong way, and that's my own fault. No doubt about that. Okay, this is about as good as we're going to get for our ascending descending node here, so we're just going to go to horizontal velocity up for now. We're about 15 seconds away from the apoapsis, so we probably are going to need to angle up a little bit more here. So that is indeed exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to angle us about here. How are we doing for our apoapsis? It is holding and going up. Perfect. So that is about what we need right now is some amount of apoapsis speed. We're going to hold here until that goes up to about 30 seconds or so. And we're working on bringing up our horizontal speed. This is not an efficient way to get to orbit. <laughs> I highly don't recommend this. And also we still have our launch escape tower. We may want to actually activate that here. Okay. Mildly awkward. But that did push us up a little bit, or rather pull us up a little bit. So for now, that's okay. Like I said, we've got so much Delta V in this thing that it really doesn't matter. And we can just burn here for a good long time. So that's absolutely fine. No issue whatsoever there. So like I said, about 30 seconds is where we're going to go here. And I want to check our ascending descending node. Yeah, 3.6 degrees. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. We can definitely get that changed, but we're significantly better than we were. <laughs> significantly better. 180 degrees off was not great. That's definitely true. We can see the ascending node is pulling over this way as well. So I'm going to take us over to normal plus again. Actually, it's the other direction. Normal minus. Okay, sounds good. So we're just going to get this fixed a bit as best we can. We can't get it exactly where we need it to go because of our current positioning in the burn, but we can get it a little bit better. There we go. And we're just going to go to horizontal velocity up now. So we can see time to apoapsis is about 20 seconds away. And we do still need a fair amount of additional horizontal speed. So we'll see how that ends up going. We're going to start dropping very, very soon. So I'm going to take us back to Killrot and just look to get a little bit more vertical speed here. There, it's going up. Okay, that'll be fine. So we're still primarily getting horizontal speed in this attitude, but we're getting enough vertical speed that we're not going to hit the apoapsis, which is what I want at this moment. This is an awkward launch, no doubt about it, but that is because I launched in the wrong direction and we're trying to correct it before we make our way to orbit. This is not an efficient way to do things. I want to be very clear about that. I highly, highly do not recommend this system. <laughs> okay, so we're currently at about 30 seconds to orbit right now. We're not gonna do any additional inclination changes. So we're just going to position ourselves about here and just get horizontal speed. So that's great. Our vertical speed is going to be dropping and it'll take some time for that to finish. But look at that. Time to apoapsis is going up as we are burning horizontally. So what that ends up meaning is we actually need to coast a bit here. I'm going to continue to burn here until this hits one minute. We don't actually care about our altitude as long as it's reasonable, right? So now we can set up a maneuver here to circularize. And that'll be right about here. We've gotten most of that dealt with. 
And our ascending descending node is only two degrees off, so that's really not too bad. I'm going to decouple the nose bit here. We really don't need that. And we're going to warp forward a little bit in physics warp. Hopefully this thing doesn't come back and impact us. We've got about 20 seconds to drift apart. I'm going to rotate us over this direction in hopes of it not clipping our solar panels. Okay, this is going to be awkward. Okay, we're clear. Cool. <laughs> there we go. Awkward indeed. We are now in orbit, and that is great. Just circularizing it up, and that's good enough. Beautiful. So next up, of course, would be to change our inclination. And that's only two degrees off, which is good because we threw so much delta V into changing that. A whole lot of delta V, but we have so much more. Like, I'm really deeply unconcerned about the delta V on the Soyuz. So we'll just set up something like that, 75.1 meters per second to get this lined up correctly. But it is about time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we'll go and get our Piers docking module set up. It will eventually be deorbited, but that is absolutely fine. No major concern there. You can leave your offerings to the Engagement Gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Andy McGar, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.